keep your hands lifted. Let's just praise him. There's some oil on that thing that is anointed. Lord, thank you for who you are. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you that we have an opportunity to serve you. Thank you for the identity that, we, that you've given us, Lord. Thank you for your righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Praise you, Father. You're so good. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. We have another day. We are here to hear from you, Lord. We are here to serve you, not just occupy a pew, Lord. We are here to serve you because you're worthy, because you're good, because you've poured out so much in the earth and in us, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for who you are, Lord. All right. Y'all, that, that song right there, man. All right. I was trying to contain myself over there. I liked that song. I was like, wow, what a great song to, to come out on. So good morning. Good morning to you. You guys look great. I just want to welcome you home. Welcome to World Changer Church Houston. Uh, welcome to the best place in Texas that you could be on a Sunday morning. Right? So we want to take this time to welcome one another and to speak to our brothers and sisters that have uh, probably gone through some things this week, had an interesting week, maybe some things turned upside down they didn't expect. So let's love on one another for the next 60 seconds or so. I definitely got too excited. That song um, got me a little wrapped up in Jesus. <laughs> we have to take the opportunity to welcome our first time visitors. Do we have anybody? This is your first day visiting us for today. If you just wave your hand. Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, you should receive something from the, uh, from the desk when you walk in. They should have a little something for you. Our usher is bringing something to you as well. All right. So. I'm going to come to you all today with a scripture, and um, I guess my little message has a title. It just came out when I was thinking about it, and it says, don't be defined by your past and your experiences. So with that, don't be defined by your past and your experiences. Let's go to Ephesians 1, 4 through 5 in the New Living Translation. So it says, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. So that's before the world. So this is like pre-Adam and Eve. He chose you. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. He has great pleasure in choosing us, and he chose to adopt us. So when I think about adoption, I personally, which is weird, I guess the Lord's calling me to adopt one day. Um, I've thought about adopting kids more than I've had uh, of my own, of having my own kids. And um, when you think about adoption, it's beautiful. It's beautiful that, you know, everything that God's put inside you, he can pray for a child. You can prepare, do all the paperwork, and do all these different things. And you literally can be like a hand of grace to dip into a child's life and deliver them from all kinds of different things. Family bondage, their parents were tripping, all kinds of different situations. So 
says, I want you to think about that adopted child, though. <clears throat> Imagine if an adopted child chose to, even after adop you adopting them, imagine that they chose to identify, to define themselves by the brokenness, the lack, the dysfunction, the rejection in their past, or with the sins of their family. So even though you did everything you had to do, you prayed for, you have them in your house. You probably just bought a brand new house. And your husband probably just landed a good job. You just moved into a neighborhood with the best schools. Imagine that they still wanted to look at themselves like that, even though they've been delivered from that. So it says, so even though they're not there anymore, day after day, they shape their current day. So when they wake up in the morning, they shape their current day and their future by their past, and they don't have, that they don't have to be attached to anymore. So it's like, man, I, Lord, okay, I went through all this, but the kid's still waking up day after day like he's where he used to be, and he's not there anymore, okay? So imagine that even though you as a new parent, you've prepared this new life, and like I said, it's almost like they have this pair of glasses on it. Everything that they see is like from their past and everything that defined them from back then. So as a parent, you would want that child, when they wake up in that new home, in that new neighborhood you moved into, you would want them to pay attention to your love. I want you to think about what your parents did. <laughs> I want to think about the, the auntie that had to foster you for a little bit. I want you to focus on this love that I'm pouring out to you, this mercy that I'm giving towards you, the provision We've laid out this pathway for you, um, and we have a better future for you. That's what I want you to, fo to focus on. And um, that's what we do to God, you guys. That's exactly what we do to God. We allow our past and our old identity labels to define how we walk out life in this earth. And we're not there anymore. Some of us are walking around like victims, and you're not a victim anymore. Now, what you went through may have been extremely traumatic. You may still see some symptoms of it, but woman and man of God, that ain't you no more. That's not you. You have to get in that secret place with God and let God redefine who you are, okay? You need to put on the labels that he's given you, not the labels of your past, but you need to put on the label that you are unstained, that you are chosen, you are Christ-like, you are delivered. Ooh. <clears throat> you are the salt of the earth. You are healed. You are innocent. You are loved. You are worthy. You are purpose. You belong to him, and you are a citizen of heaven. And you guys, just coming to church and sitting in this pew is not going to help you Look at your life like that. You have to get to that secret place with your father. You have to renew your mind to what the word of God says to you. You have to take off the old life and put on this new life that he designed for you to have before the foundations of the earth. Okay? We, we, got it. we almost have to, to get brainwashed. Okay? You can't be defined by it. So I just say it. Let your adopted parent, God, take off those old lens and perspectives of yourself you've been looking through. Let him shift your paradigm and allow you to see things in a new way. And once again, this has to go from head knowledge to heart knowledge. So let that get in your heart and transform your heart. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> Amen. God is good. So... Um, I want to take this opportunity, if any of the things that I just said and that, that little miniature encouraging word stuck with you, if you feel like you have, like you're still walking around with, with some labels of your past and labels of your experience, of your trauma, um, of any dysfunctional things that's going on, and, and even when you look in the mirror, you're like, I, I, don't, I don't see this. I don't see that I'm Christ-like. I don't see that I'm righteous. I don't see that I'm worthy. I don't see that I'm chosen. I don't see that I'm a citizen of heaven. If you need us to stand in the gap for you and to pray for and encourage you on those things, 
we're here to do that for you today. If there's anything else that's on your plate, anything that's taking you by surprise, unexpected, and you're like, I just, I know the Lord, I know he's present, I know he's willing, but I, I just need some uplifting. Whatever it could be, that's only two examples. Um, we are, excuse me, going to pray for one another. So if that's you, if you need prayer, if you wouldn't mind just raising your hand. Does anybody need prayer for any of those things on this morning? Okay, so let's try this as well. Do we have any prayer counselors available? And I do apologize for not getting you prepared. Let's give them a few seconds. Because I know this, this kind of stuff can, uh, can be pretty deep. So I'll give you some time to think about it. And once again, this is prayer for the stuff that I talked about. And any other thing you just need prayer, you need somebody who knows the word to speak to you on this morning, okay? So if you have anything you need prayer for, please come down.
is healer, awesome in power. stand against and if our God is for us then who could ever stop us and if our God is with us what could stand against amen all right if we got prayer counts just need to keep going please keep going all right so we have some announcements for you first one is connect group south you're cordially invited to join us for live anointed preaching every week at the Pearland location. Doors open at 5.30, corporate prayer starts at 6.30, and service begins at 7 p.m. Details are available for the communications desk. So if you are unable to make it to Bible study, sometimes maybe Wednesday doesn't work for your schedule, but your Thursdays are open, you should check that out, especially if you live anywhere over there. Food pantry, amen. <laughs> Food pantry and clothing ministry would like to thank you for your support. We are able to minister to those in crisis because of your generous uh, donations. <clears throat> you can get involved by volunteering or connecting your Kroger Plus card to the church. You will be supporting our, our pantry while you shop. The pantry is open the last Sunday of the month from noon to 1 and Tuesdays from 11 to 1. WCYE Teen Ministry invites you to a breakfast and sweet treats bake sale beginning Sunday, April 21st, which is a little under a month because it's pretty much April already. Um, before and after service in the foyer, proceeds will support our team ministry attending the 2019 Grace Life Youth Conference in Atlanta. Costs for the items will range from $1 to $5. Ticket sales will begin April 7th in the foyer. Please see a youth specialist for details. So a really important one is our WCC Houston database, database update. It says we are moving our entire database to, uh, to Planning Center, a new church communication program. We'd like to update our entire database for your accuracy. If any of your contact information has changed or you've never received emails from us, would you please raise your hand if you haven't already filled out this updated form? If you haven't already filled this out, just raise your hand, because if not, we have one in the front. Uh, the ushers will uh, come and give you one. So we can stay in contact with you, keep up with your life. All right, here we go. Next one, World Changers Church Houston <clears throat> encourages you to like us on Facebook and Instagram and share our pages with your friends. Remember to watch our services on our YouTube channel at World Changers Church Houston. Remember, you can purchase CDs of all messages and series to include Marriage Made by One at the bookstore. And I did forget, if you're filling out that form, you can put it in an offering bucket when that comes around. So up next, we're going to go to our lovely praise and worship, song, praise and worship team for a special song. Hallelujah. We know that uh, his grace and mercy follows us all the days of our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Your grace is chasing me down.
We don't even, we don't even know God's voice. But somehow, the Holy Spirit moves us unto him. Yes. Isn't that awesome? Yes. I'm just so thankful I'm saved. Yes. Amen. I didn't know I needed it. But he did it for me. He had a plan. He has a plan for my life. He has a plan for your life. And he equips you with everything you need. All he wants you to do is say yes. Yes to his will. Yes to his way. Forever yes. Amen? Well, let's give the Lord a hand, clap of praise, and welcome to World Changes Church Houston. It's the best church in Texas. Hallelujah. Praise God. So my name is Deborah Hayes, and on behalf of our senior pastors, Pastor Archie and Melissa Collins, we welcome you. Amen. And we also welcome those who are viewing us online. Isn't technology great? Amen. So uh, we're going to go ahead with our communion, y'all. So raise your hand if you need a communion element. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I love those blood songs. Amen? What would we have done without the blood? We'd be sad. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the blood. So let's take that bread. For he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him so we can live peaceful lives. And with his stripes, we were healed. Amen. So he not only died for our sins, but he died that we would have peace. And he died that we would be healed. He did all of that on the cross. So let's honor him by taking of his body this morning. And his blood. That gives me strength. Remember that song, y'all, that old song? From day to day, it'll never lose its power. Amen. The same power when he died is available to us today. So let's take up his blood. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. For the blood of Jesus. as we get into the message. I don't think this is going to be long today. So Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just thank you for this opportunity to speak to these your people. And I pray that you speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you. And you told me that out of my mouth will flow rivers of living water. So I thank you for that today, Father, and it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen, and thank God. Amen. So, um, Charde just almost preached what I was going to talk about today. I said, what is she saying? So I said, Lord, I know I'm supposed to talk about this today. Isn't that something when you get a confirmation like that? So, um, Pastor Archie has been teaching the series Marriage Made by One. Have y'all been enjoying that? Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. I mean, Marriage Made by One is something in there if you're married, if you're single. I mean, he's just covering all bases. Yeah. And so, I'm just going to do a quick review. And then I am going to talk about the spirit of insecurity. Y'all know what that is? <laughs> the spirit of insecurity. 
Because that's a spirit that's tearing up families, tearing up relationships. And I was under that spirit up until my early 20s. And when I got saved, God delivered me from that spirit. And I know it's running wild in families, in men, in women. And um, until I was able to admit that, that, that I had that spirit, there was nothing that I could do about it. But sometimes you have to hear what it is. You have to see what it looks like. And you can say, oh, that's me. I got that issue. That's why I have problems with relationships. That's why I da da da. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes you have to see it. But I want to do a quick review of some of the things that Pastor Archie has uh, been teaching us about. Would y'all put up 1 John 4, 7 and 8, ERV version, 1 John 4, 7 and 8? I want to cover two things that he just reviewed, two things, because they both have to do with this topic. Um, so he shared with us that the importance of relationships being built upon God, who is love. That's the importance of relationships. It should be built upon God. Amen. Otherwise, it's selfish. And you can't get anything out of a relationship if you're selfish in it, right? You can't go, if you want to go where God wants you to go in your life, in this relationship, you can't be selfish. You have to, um, when, God, when the Holy Spirit says, do this or do that, you have to listen to the Holy Spirit so you can get on the point where you are and move on in that relationship. So this scripture says, dear friends, we should love each other because love comes from God. Everyone who loves has become God's child. And so, everyone who loves knows God. Why? For God is love. Amen? You can use, you can use that interchangeably. When you talk about God, you're talking about love. When you talk about love, you are talking about God. Amen? Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Okay, and another point that he shared with us. Y'all put up Matthew 6, 6, ERV. He shared with us how an intimate, close, personal relationship with the Holy Spirit and that means spending intimate time with him helps us to walk in love. That helps us to be like God when we spend time with the Holy Spirit. You know, when you spend time with the Holy Spirit, I know one time uh, Pastor Archie says, when you, when you jump in water, one of the products of water is you're going to get wet because wet is in water. You know what I'm saying? When you spend time with the Holy Spirit, you're going to come away with the fruit of the Spirit. Those things are going to start developing you. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, meekness, temperance, mercy. So if you're lacking in any of those areas, as you spend that intimate, quality time with the Holy Spirit, you're going to get wet with those things. Right? So this scripture... Um, oh, then he also said, this, it helps us to walk in love. And because he gives us that desire, he gives us that desire to relate to one another. And then he shows us in that intimate time how to relate. So Matthew 6, 6, ERV. But when you pray, so he's telling us how, how do we get into that intimate time with the Father? When you pray, you should go into your room and close the door. That's very specific, isn't it? Close the door so you can have intimate time with him. Then pray to your father. He is there in that private place. He's waiting for you. He's waiting. I know there's an there's a elder in the ch uh, church I used to attend. He said, 
keep that appointment with God. He's waiting for you. He's waiting to come for you to come and talk to him. And when you don't, it's like, oh, shoot. I had something to say. But they didn't come. They didn't keep that appointment. Then pray, it says, then pray to your father in that secret place. He is there in that private place. He can see, he can see what is done in private, and he will reward you. And there's another version that says that he will reward you openly. Amen. Amen? Well, you don't go in there to be rewarded. You know what I'm saying? You go in there because you need help. I mean, I know that's why I go. Because I need help with an area. You know, we're going to talk about insecurity. You need the Holy Ghost to break that spirit of insecurity because it ain't, that spirit of insecurity is terrible. It don't sound like it, but it can make you do some things that you don't want to share with anybody. So you need to go into that secret place to break that spirit. So the way that this topic came up, this spirit of insecurity, so we were at, um, uh, Thursday before last, you know, we have connect group meetings. You know, we have connect group north here at Pastor Archie and Pastor Melissa's house, and this is a, a commercial for connect groups <laughs> because you can sit down in an intimate setting and talk about some of the things that we're hearing from our senior pastors. So we have connect group north and we have connect group south. Well, in that Connect Group North meeting, we had a chance to discuss, to talk about personal relationships. Good ones you've had and bad ones you've had. Amen? And you know that there's a scripture that says as I, uh, that two people, two Christians can sharpen one another like iron, right? So those sessions are, in fact, they're usually about an hour, hour and a half. We started at 8.30 during that, at that session. You know, we got out at 10, and we were still wanting to talk because this topic was so rich and so helpful. So we talked about uh, things that make successful marriages, things that make successful relationships, even as a single, single people. And then we, as I said, talked about things that make relationships unsuccessful. And we know that when a relationship is unsuccessful, the missing element is love. Amen? So today, this is my objective today, to expose the workings of that spirit of insecurity, the one that tells people that they aren't worthy of love. That's what that spirit tells you. You're not worthy of love. You don't, you don't um, line up with other people. You're insecure. Don't try and be what, who God has made you to be because you're not enough. You don't have what it takes. That's what that spirit tells you. So would y'all put up that first PowerPoint? The first PowerPoint. Can y'all see that? You can't see it? Okay, well, I'm going to read it as well. I'm going to read it. All righty. So, the definition is the very first paragraph there. So, what is insecurity? Insecurity is when a male or female believes they are inferior. They have common feelings of uncertainty or anxiety about themselves. Lack of confidence, beset by fear. And some of the syn synonyms are self-doubt, thank you, being unsure of oneself, your self-conscious, you're nervous, you're anxious, apprehensive, vulnerable, and fragile. 
So here are some possible causes. And, and like uh, Sade said, I, okay, so let me just say this. This may not apply to everybody in the room, right? Because if you're in a healthy relationship, either whether you're married or single, and especially as it relates to fathers in um, homes, this probably does not apply to you. But there are some people in this room that this applies to. So we want you to understand that there is deliverance for the spirit of insecurity. Because you really can't go forward like God wants you to if this spirit is plaguing you. So here are some possible causes. The seeds of insecurity or inferiority are usually unknowingly sown in childhood. No, okay, so listen to this. No affirmation of sons and daughters. I know um, when I was growing up, uh, I came up in a single family, uh, single, uh, my mother raised me, father wasn't there, and I really didn't know, of course as a, as a little girl, I didn't know the purpose of a father in a relationship. And I think a lot of, even now today in marriages, sometimes people don't understand the purpose of a father. Well, what is the purpose of a father? He validates you. He validates the girl. He validates the son. So when that person is missing, you, there's no validation. So let me tell you, I can speak for a girl. So when you grow up, you didn't get that love. You didn't get that validation that the father is supposed to give you. But you know what? God built you so that you needed it. You needed it. You needed to be whole as a girl. You needed to be whole as a man. And when the father is missing and doesn't understand validation, it's a problem. And as a girl, you're going to go around looking for love in all the wrong places. That's what I did. Can I just be transparent? You know, there was a hole that wasn't filled. All I knew was that it was a hole. And I knew a man was supposed to fill it, but it was my father. Not people, men that would come up to me. Men in college, well, you just name it in the club, can I be transparent? Amen. I ain't been saved all my life. Amen. You know, I'm just being real with you. Because this spirit is not nice. Y'all ever see, listen, y'all ever see that movie, It's a Thin Line? <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I, didn't, I can see the spirit of insecurity. And that's what that woman had. It can get that bad. It can take you away from here. So, usually sown unknowingly in childhood, and boys grow up angry. They look for validation in, um, what do you call it, the games. They get a validation, but it's not, it's a validation that the enemy sends. You know? So they do destructive things. If not addressed, they manifest in certain behaviors as the child continues to grow, affecting their well-being and relationships. It's already mentioned. I wasn't affirmed. Now, I'm not blaming him. You know what? I am not blaming my father. Because he didn't know. He didn't know. And it probably happened in his family. You know, this is generational. This is something now, we're no longer under the curse. Amen? Amen. Jesus broke that curse. Amen. But unless you know, and unless you know why you're behaving, the curse ain't broken for you. You know what I'm saying? It's, 
Let me take that back. It's broken, but you're not walking in it. Amen. Amen. Amen? An absent parent, lack of love in the home, and I already mentioned this, generational insecurity in the family. So you can be there and be absent. You know? So you have to check that. You have to check yourself. Are you validating your sons? Are you validating your daughters? Even, even mothers have a role in this. They have a role in this. And, and first of all, you have to make sure you're marrying the right person. But if you're in it, you have to do all you can to provide love to your children. <laughs> you know, I remember one time, my, now my father did some bad things, I'm going to tell you. He, my, both of my parents are dead. And my father, he did do some bad things. Uh, but a couple years ago, I remember, you know, my mother used to talk about my father, which is, which is not right, right? It's not right. But she didn't know. I'm not angry at her. But she used to talk about him, and so I remember one time, I was just a little girl. I don't know what gave me the courage to do this, because I really, there was a chance I wouldn't be standing here today. <laughs> but I, my mother was, I remember like it was yesterday, we were driving, we were in the car, and driving down the road. And so he was saying something else about, she was saying something else about my father. Now I know, I knew it was some bad things that my father did, but you know, when your parent, whoever the parent is, they can be bad, you don't want nobody to talk about them. You know, that's your parent. You know what I'm saying? You exercise grace, even though they ain't, you know what I'm saying, you know they're doing bad things. And I asked my mother, I said, well, if he was so bad, why did you marry, why did you marry him? But I didn't, you know, I don't even remember what she said. She didn't hit me, though. <laughs> you know, it probably caused her to think about it. So, you know, we have to think about it. But so a couple of years ago, I thought, I'm not mad at my father. I love my father. And he's even gone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But when Facebook and fathers, they come out and say, I, this is my daddy. I love him. Because he didn't know. He didn't know. You know, he didn't know. You know, he wasn't church. He probably wasn't even saved. But he didn't know. So you can't blame, you know what I'm saying? I know there are a lot of, I know I see sessions where men, uh, you know, yeah, men conferences and they, you know, didn't have fathers to validate them and, it, you know, it's so sad. But I just want to tell y'all, they didn't know. They didn't understand what it was, you know? So you have to forgive them and keep going on with your life. And then learn, maybe you can help validate some single um, mother's child. Amen? Social discrimination. Race or tribe or clan, disadvantaged and deprived. Okay, so I'm going to talk about this. And it actually came up in Connect Group. One of the members asked the question, well, what do you think, did you think this has anything to do with especially for the African-American community, the slavery that we went through? Absolutely it does. You know the enemy will do anything to stop the plan of God. Amen. You know, um, that wasn't only when they brought slaves from Africa, and that long trip, and I don't know how many million people died. And they, they got here. You know, it, it was to work the fields, but let me tell you, that was a strategy of the enemy. Yes. To bring African-American men down. That was. Yes. But you know what? We are the sons and daughters of God. Yes. And I just, you know, I just want to say that our men have great potential. And they do great things Amen. in God. Amen. And that is the strength. If somebody's trying to bring you down, they know your potential. Amen. So, and in every, even, I remember the first time I went to Kenya. And there are like five or six major tribes there. And 
and you know, and everybody, well, not, not everybody's black, but the majority of the folks in, in Africa are black, right, in Kenya, you know, and they had all these tribes. And I found out, I won't name the, the tribes, but I found out a couple of them had issues with each other. I said, y'all got issues with, y'all are all black. <laughs> and then it dawned on me. That was a strategy of Satan. Yeah. Whatever it was that he caused those tribes not to like one another, he got a strategy for everybody. His strategy is to block the plan of God in your life and my life. And he definitely doesn't want the sons and daughters of God to rise up and be who he's called them to be. Well, it stops with this gospel of grace. And it stops with us having intimate time with the Father. Because he tells you, he affirms you in that secret place. You know, he's waiting for you to come in so he can affirm you and tell you what your assignment is and tell you you have all that you need to do that assignment. Amen? Amen. So social discrimination is one. Okay, let's go to the next slide. This is the final slide. Okay, so what are the possible behaviors? Hesitant to be your true self. Be who you are. You know what I'm saying? If people don't accept it, well, that's their problem. God made you. I decide when I preach, I'm going to be who I am. I can't afford to try and be like anybody else. I got to be who I am. Right? God uses your personality. He didn't make a mistake when he made you. Perfectionism. Oh, this is a bad one. Because you don't feel like you, you measure up. So you've got to be perfect in everything you do. I know I used to sew as a young girl and put in a, a zipper. That's probably one of, one of the more difficult things that you can do. And if, this is how bad that spirit of insecurity was. If I had one stitch out of place in a zipper, I would rip it out and put it back in again. That's what the spirit of uh, insecurity will do for you. It tells you you have to be perfect. Well, you don't have to be perfect. And in the Bible, perfection is maturity. You don't have to be perfect. Worry, who will accept me? Who will accept me? I can't be myself. Anger, aggressive behavior. I know what years ago in my 20s, um, I was engaged. And um, we, uh, I was a new Christian. I, 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 mean, I didn't have any, I shouldn't even have been engaged. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know enough about God <laughs> to make that decision. But I was engaged. And one time, uh, my fiance, who was a minister, who loved God, he was a great man now. One time we were having an active conversation about something, and he said something about my degree. Well, I ain't never really, I ain't never said anything about my degree. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make you better than anybody else. But that was his view. I didn't know it until we had this argument. It was an argument. We weren't even talking about that. But he was anger. He, was, he wasn't, he didn't feel like he was who he was supposed to be. So anything that looked like it challenged him in that area, he had a problem with it. But you know what? He was a great man of God. But insecure. Jealousy. Why aren't I like them? Why am I like this, God? Jealousy. Entering, re okay. Enter in relationships that aren't for you. This is part of the looking for love in all the wrong places. Even if they are not saved, you'll enter into that relationship. Because you want to be validated. You want to cling to somebody. And even just because they're saved doesn't mean they're for you. Clinging, obsessive behavior. I just want somebody to love me. That's what it is. 
a lot of times young girls, you'll hear them say this, they'll have babies. I, I, I just want somebody to love, you know? But they enter into these relationships, have a child, and it's too much for their young lives, you know? Feelings of inferior, inferiority, inadequacy. They don't feel protected because the father didn't confirm them. Self-defeating behaviors. Not as, not as good as, not as attractive as. Always comparing themselves to someone else. People are against me. Isolation from people. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay, y'all can raise the uh, lights. So, all of these things that we looked at are false under a relationship with God. Because he made you to be all that he wants you to be. So look, okay, so he's asking me to go. Sorry about that. Because he made you to be all that he wants you to be. So let's look at Psalm 139, verse 13. We're going to look at some scripture. All right. For thou hast possessed my reins. Okay, so, so, so now these are the scriptures so, that are going to address this spirit of insecurity. Okay? So thou hast, for thou hast possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb before you ever came. God covered you. You came here whole. I will praise thee, what? For you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's what God says about you. You're wonderful. He made you. He didn't make a mistake. So you don't have to be insecure. Marvelous are thy works. I'm marvelous. And that my soul knoweth right well. There's another translation that says, you formed my innermost being, shaped my delicate inside and my intricate outside and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. <laughs> Everything you do is marvelous. Breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it. How thoroughly you know me. And the Hebrew word for knit or woven. Um, he, so he, he, God covers you. He defends you. So I'm going to go back to something that uh, Pastor Archie shared with us last Sunday. It was so rich. He said, so how is personal time with God the answer to this and other relationship issues we may have? When I enter his presence, I will rest in God. Don't go in worrying. Spend time with him resting in that place. And he'll tell me what to do with my insecure self. He'll tell me what to do. You know, when Pastor Archie and I was talking with another member about this after church last Sunday, and we just talked about how this blessed us, it was a simple message, but so profound. Because as he began to talk about these things, I could see even in my prayer time, you know, sometimes you... You have, you know, you say, okay, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you. And then, you know, sometimes I write lists and I'm thinking, I got all these people to pray. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It helped me. It released me. He said, go in and rest. And then talk to the Father. You know, and if you don't pray in tongues, this is, this is where one of the places where praying in the Spirit is so important. Because you don't know what to say. And if you're praying for other people, you don't know what to say. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you can, I don't go say, Amen. 
You know, I don't know what I said, but I know I got out what I wanted to say. You know, so this is one of the places where that helps you. I've got to rest. I got to rest that all is well when I go into that secret place where God is waiting for me to come into. Christianity, this is what he went on to say, is people taking the time, exercising their rights in getting to know God. It's about getting to know him. You don't know all there is to know about God. He's waiting to tell us. The offshoot, this was so awesome. The offshoot of this time with God is knowing your purpose. He'll like download this into you. You know when you get an update in your phone, you just click, I click on the update. I don't know what's in the update. I don't read all of those notes, but I know I need it. Why? Because the manufacturer is sending the download to my iPhone. I'm stupid if I don't click to get the update. Because there are things in there that they know are wrong with the phone. You don't have to understand what's in the update, what's in the download in your secret place, in your secret time with God. You just need to get it. Get in that room where he's waiting on you to give you the update. The offshoot is your purpose. Deliverance is in that update. Healing is in that update. Awesome relationships is in that update. Whether you're married or you're single, it's in that update. Then he goes on to say these and other things are byproducts of getting to know God. Don't opt for the mechanics before the relationship. Amen. Sometimes we want to get busy with the mechanics. He may tell you, don't do that. Just take this update from me. And then he goes on to say, a byproduct of diving into the water, which I already mentioned, is getting wet. Thus, the byproduct of spending quality personal time with God is becoming more like him. Amen. Amen. Let's go to Acts 10, verse 38. Acts 10, verse 38. How God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power how he went about doing good and, in particular, curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil, for God was with Jesus. Let me tell you, the spirit of insecurity is an oppression. And it will follow you for years if you don't address it. It will affect your life your family, your job, relationships, you name it. Even in the church, you have a call on your life to do something, everybody in here. But the spirit of insecurity will tell you, no, not yet, so you don't do it like her, you don't do it like him, you don't speak well, you don't, yet. on and on. But the devil is a liar. Because the Bible says that every joint supplieth what the body needs. Yes. Uh, do I have to say, where are you? Yeah. It supplies what you need, what the body needs. So the Holy Spirit, God used, used Jesus, but you have the Holy Spirit available to you. Just, uh, just, just do it. You know what I'm saying? If you're afraid, do it afraid. Nobody's perfect. You know, our founder says, Dr. Dollar, everybody got an issue. Everybody got an issue. Just do it. Stand up and do it. Say yes to the call. Don't be, a, don't be afraid. God is waiting on you. It's your here. He's waiting on you. Don't let the spirit of insecurity stop you. 
because he's a liar. He wants to stop the plan of God. And if he stops you, he stops a portion of the plan of God. Now, you know, Pastor Ashley shared something else, and this is so true. Not everything that God designed to do comes to pass. Why? Because he does it through people. And if people are too afraid to get up and do what God has asked them to do, it won't happen. He's relying on us. Okay. Next scripture, 1 John 4, 4 through 6. I only got one more, and I'm done. 1 John 4, 4 through 6. Ye are of God, little children, sons and daughters of God, and have overcome them. What have you overcome? The spirit of insecurity. Because greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. He's telling you that you don't have the ability, though. But God just said, greater is he that is in you than he who is in the world. Daring, get up and do what God has asked you to do. This is a loving church. If you fall down, we'll pick you up. Amen. If you have problems, call somebody. I got to call people. I have problems. You know what I'm saying? You can't call everybody. But God will tell you who you can confide in. Call him. Dare the devil. You know what I'm saying? This is my last scripture. Psalm 27, verse 10, King James Version. I must, yes. When my mother and my father forsake me. What? Mothers and fathers forsake children? Yes. And not only the ones who are adopted. They forsake them even in the family home. When my mother and my father forsake me. What does that mean? Forsake. To leave. To lose. To leave behind. Let alone. Abandon neglect what happens then the Lord will take me up yeah. I don't want my mother and my father forsaking me but hey since I said no to that spirit and yes to God I tell you I have peace yeah. and oh he does try and come back but I recognize him yeah. and I go the other way when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. What does that take me up mean? To gather for any purpose. He'll gather you. He'll receive you. He'll take you away. This is what the Amplified Version of that says. Although my father and my mother have forsaken me, yet the Lord will take me up. He'll adopt me as his child. Last version, my mother, my father abandoned me. They didn't know what that would do to me. They didn't know. I'm like an orphan in this spirit of insecurity. But you took me in and made me yours. Amen? Amen. Did y'all get anything out of that? Amen. Praise God. So now we're ready to receive our offering. Amen. Amen. We give because we love God. We give because we want to see the gospel of grace. Well, first of all, we want to take care of our responsibilities here in our home. Amen. This is our home. It's an awesome home. Amen. It's an awesome home. Doing great things throughout the city and throughout the world. It's an honorable home. With senior pastors that love you. 
lay down their life for you. So first we want to take care of this place. But then we want that gospel of grace to go out from these doors. Amen? That Thursday night, Pastor Archie said, we want people to hear that they don't have to live in insecure conditions. How many know that takes money? Yes. Amen. Amen. So as you give, you're helping to send that message out into the world. So y'all can go ahead and receive that. Father God, we thank you for these, your people who have given gifts to further the gospel of grace. We thank you, Father God, that you are the God of our supply. And we don't have to be scared and we don't have to be concerned about our giving. You said you'd supply seed to the sower and bread for food, and we thank you for that, Father. It's in Jesus' name we pray. So now it's time for the altar call. Um, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that's where life begins. And uh, so there are three things, actually, that we're going to ask you to consider. First, to make Jesus Christ, the head of your life, your Lord and Savior, that's where life begins. Amen. The only thing bad about it is that I didn't do it earlier. Amen. And then, if you have not received the Holy Spirit into your life, the bap we call it the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I know there's a lot of controversy around that, but it's in the Bible. And let me tell you, if it wasn't for that, I, I don't think I would have gotten out of that spirit. Because it takes power to say no to that. After, <laughs> I'm going to say this, after re, uh, receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, like I said in that, those young days, you know, you can be promiscuous, promiscuous even with that, with that spirit. But with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, even when I wanted to say yes, I could say no. That's the type of power he, he provides. It's awesome, y'all. So if you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, don't be shy. Everybody had to walk down here or somewhere in their home or whatever. You need that power. And then last but not least, This is the best church in Texas. It is the place that God has called you to. So we want you to consider those three requests. And we want the congregation to rise and speak to your neighbor. And if you need help coming down, somebody will walk down here with you. Amen. Praise God. Y'all stand up.
give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we love you. I'm going to pray and just release this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father God, for this word on today. We thank you for hearts to receive, Father God. And we thank you, Lord God, that this week will be an awesome week in the lives of these, your people. We're not going to listen to the enemy, but we're going forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all be blessed. You're released, amen.